What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Supper Suite at TIFF 2022. I have the team behind the People's Joker here, and I mean this from my, the bottom of my heart. This is a one-of-a-kind production that is so special for so many reasons. There's no way we're going to have time to get to everything, but know that I feel that way. Okay. <laughs> I have a feeling you're going to get asked this a lot at the festival, but when it's a festival premiere, a lot of our audience does not know what your movie is just yet, so can you give us a brief synopsis of The People's Joker? For sure. The People's Joker is a illegal queer coming-of-age comic book movie about an unfunny transgender clown named Joker who starts an illegal comedy theater in a town called Gotham City. That didn't pique someone's interest. There's something wrong with them. <laughs> Before digging into the movie itself, I wanted to know a little more about your background, Vera, because I know you've worked with Tim and Eric before, yes. and they are one of a kind creators themselves. So how has working with them influenced the filmmaker you are now and want to become in the future? Well, when I was when I was in like film school, I really I was obsessed with experimental film and like particularly like Kenneth Anger and Maya Darren and stuff. And I think even back then, in my head, I was like, this is what I'll do for a living. I'll be like an experimental filmmaker and I'll, you know, and like I would never have made a living off of that. And I discovered Tim and Eric like around that time and it was like, this is the closest I can get to it. These are the really pushing the medium forward with like analog and VHS and stuff. Like, what a such a great environment to uh, come up in and like learn all the stuff that I had to learn to ever pull off any of the stuff we did in this movie <laughs> they're one of the most traumatizing interviews i've ever done i knew what i knew i knew what i was in for when i agreed to sit down for a 20 minute on camera interview but it was literally 20 minutes of the two of them pretending to bake bread under their hats and i'm just sitting there trying to ask like thoughtful questions about filmmaking yeah. well there was but, your mistake I know, I know, I know. I le i've learned my lesson if we ever uh if we ever meet again i will be breaking uh bread under my hat yeah. I like to think they've softened a little bit. So hopefully, maybe you'll be able to have a real conversation with them if you see them again. One can dream, one yeah. can dream. All right, Bree, I want to phrase this right. I heard that you commissioned a found footage remix of Tom Phillips' uh, Joker movie. Yeah. What exactly does that mean? And what inspired that? Great question, Perry. <laughs> um, <laughs> we were talking about specifically, it was when Joker was coming out and Todd Phillips had said something about pivoting from making comedy to making drama. And Vera and I had worked together quite a bit and had never even come close to being able to do what Todd Phillips had done in comedy. So we were, I was, I was salty. I was salty about that comment. <laughs> I wanted to see what would happen if we just sort of clowned around with Joker. Uh, so I believe it was like over the lunch table one day. Uh, yeah. We threw it out and then I Venmoed Vera $12 and we were off to the races and here we yeah. are. And I had Typical never, Tiff story. I'd never like gotten a commission for anything before. Like nobody's ever like, like I've been paid to do artistic things, but like I've never, it was the most I've ever felt like an artist, even though like she's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, oh, wow. And it was $12, but. Yeah, that's I feel how it like, started. I feel like that receipt is something you should print out and save. Isn't it like a like a superstition, especially when you get your first job ever and you get your first paycheck? You're supposed to save it for good luck. Yeah. I would like to also add that I did send another $12 last week when Vera finished the film. So yes, yeah. the total was 24. We weren't skimping. Ooh, Angel I mean, investor. <laughs> <laughs> this, you know, I don't I can't reveal what the budget was, but it was more than $24. So I there's don't know something I, about that bookend that makes me very happy. I love hearing about how collaborators find the right partners and come together. So how did all of you meet to begin with? We met at, absolutely, at, at Tim and Eric's production company, and Brie was a writer on numerous shows there. Nate and I have been making stuff together. As long as we've known each other, really, yeah. yeah. Like, we did web series. We used to do stuff out of, uh, uh, like, a public access station called Highland Park TV in L.A. And then, uh, yeah. And we, I, we clicked right away. Like, yeah. I, I mean, I'm, 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 um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a submissive, uh, timid person. I'm, I'm, I'm very intense, but, uh, I, I don't often find people that I can like mock to their face. Yeah. And we quickly realized, oh, we have a good rapport. Cause yeah. like I could just make fun of him. And, I'm a great sub. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good <laughs> sub. He's like a bottom's bottom. Is that, that's what I always used to tell people about him. Um, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Should we start baking bread? <laughs> <laughs> There's yeah. my 
that. It was, <laughs> this yeah. wasn't in my media training. It sorry. Was, yeah. <laughs> it was to the point, too, where I was, like, really excited about this project. Like, I... Like when you said you were doing it, I'm like, I gotta find a part. I'm a comic book guy. Like, I'm trying to think, like, oh, should I like pitch myself as Commissioner Gordon or something? And you're like, yeah, duh, you're the penguin. Yeah, literally you, wrote the part for yeah. you. You're obviously penguin. You look, look like a, the you look like a. I mean, sorry. <laughs> he is allergic to fish, though. Yeah, so. that's true. Yeah. <laughs> so. You get the idea to make a movie. It's not really a traditional green light scenario because you did it yourselves, but what was the first moment where you went from thinking, we want to make this movie to it's actually gonna happen and we're gonna finish it too? I mean, it really was when, like when the commission was, was you know, presented, you know, I started making like a found footage Joker movie, like using Todd Phillips movie and Batman Forever and, you know, 60s Batman and kind of making this big, like almost everything is terrible style mashup of it. And and really like in that process and, and also just thinking about these characters as like, you know, we're it's shoved down our throats all the time that like these are the modern myths and like, oh, it's so important, which is like really just propaganda created by our government so that like Marvel movies keep getting made. But really thinking about it is like, if this these are like modern myths, like myth is about, exploring coming of age and like you know coming into being so like it really all the themes just kind of presented themselves and I, I mean Bree said this the other day and like put it best like from every step of the way we were just having fun and not really obsessing about consequence which is for me uh my therapist is very proud of me for that <laughs> uh but yeah like I think that's why it really worked like we just followed the joy and yeah so incredibly refreshing to hear that so given how you made i feel like we, we always talk about like a movie like is a script and then it changes during production and then it changes during the edit i feel like that is an, this is an extreme example of that so what would you all say is the biggest difference between how you envision this film turning out day one of shooting to what we get in the final cut of it i mean for me it was just like your brain works differently that like you visualize this stuff in like this in intense and insane way uh, where I was like, you're like, okay, so we're going to do this like shot and like, we're going to be walking. Then it's going to like do reservoir dogs type styles panning and stuff. I'm like, okay, so what does that mean for me to do? And you're like, take one step forward, turn slightly to your right. Okay. <laughs> and then it looks awesome. Like, yeah. It looks amazing. I think you like, cause we, we had a work in progress screening with some friends and, and family and crew and stuff. And, it was particularly like really nice to watch Nate's face because I could tell like while he was watching the movie, like, oh, Nate didn't think this was going to be good. <laughs> 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 Nate thought this was going to just be like something maybe 20 of our friends would watch in a yeah. like smelly warehouse somewhere in Highland Park. <laughs> and yeah, no, no it, it blew my mind. And it was like same thing, like uh, to toot both your horns, like I got this script and I was like, I this is like a cave painting. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, and it's just like, and then like, you know, think about Batman forever here. This is you like, tutor. This is you tooting our horns. Yeah. That was like a, the worst toot I've ever heard in my <laughs> life. Was amazing. This is like four dimensional chest. Like, that's what I'm trying oh, to I see. I see. I don't think I've ever heard someone describe a script as a cave painting before. <laughs> uh, I, I was, know, <laughs> we're going to talk about this later. <laughs> I hope oh Werner Herzog is not in the elevator on the way down because we're going to have a fight. <laughs> oh, my God. I have so many questions. You just brought up that you did a work in progress screening. And that part of the process always fascinates me because it is important to share your movie and to be able to take notes. But it is also equally as important to know when notes should not be taken because they'll tamper with your original vision. How is it finding that balance? I mean, you know, with this, it actually was really easy because the whole spirit of this production was I'm going to break every single rule that I was taught in comedy, in presenting my gender, in 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 like what we're told superhero movies should be about. So like really when I would get a note that would make me go like, ah, it would actually be really easy for me to go like, no, thank you, actually, we're going to do this. And I mean, there's a lot of things in the movie that have, you know, like Batman in the movie is not a great guy. He's he's like a fascist billionaire who uh, is, you know, kind of a down low, down low gay and also has some other skeletons in his closet and like that has really rubbed some people the wrong way and I think that was even something we were kind of nervous about 
broaching, but um, yeah, I mean, like, I, I really miss, I miss dangerous comedy and dangerous, like, films that don't take cheap shots at people. So, yeah, I think that was just kind of the, the mantra from the beginning. I need to ask about the illegal nature of it. I liked your answer to this in the press notes, but, but really, because I know that, you know, like, parody law and all those types of rules. It's like very gray area kind of stuff. So like what what actually is the illegal nature of this movie? Is it truly illegal to the point, this is very businessy, but to the point where getting a distributor might be a scary situation because can they distribute it? I, I This film can be 100% distributed. It is completely protected under fair use and copyright law and, and like a uh, parody law. Um, the only thing that like makes it weird in both of those categories is nobody's ever taken, you know, characters and IP and really like personalized it in this way. So I think that's the thing that really kind of makes it seem a lot maybe more dangerous than I actually think it is. And I mean, I get it. Look, I put a legal comic book movie on the poster, but that was just to get your butts in the seats you know, and, mission accomplished. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I mean, like, there's, 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 there's literally no reason for any, anybody to worry, I think, about, like, legal repercussions with this. And, and we've really, without getting into it, we've, we've gone really far to ensure that we could do this. I wouldn't have spent two years of my life, uh, I, I probably wouldn't have spent two years of my life making it an actually illegal Joker movie. If you could give one actionable piece of advice to anyone out there who winds up getting getting inspired by your movie and wants to put a similar twist on another uh, popular film franchise out there, what would it be? Do it. I got away with it and so can you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No respect for corporate IP. <laughs> and get people who will do it with you. Yeah. I mean, there's how many artists contributed to this? Over a hundred. Yeah, like it's 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 crazy. Like from all over the globe. I mean, really, just like pool your resources. And I mean, this took me so long to learn. Even after like ten years of working in TV and stuff, it's just like, don't wait for somebody to tell you that it's okay to make the movie that you've been like trying to like that you've been aching to make for a long time. Like, just go out there and just do it. To learn a little more about the process of what it took to make this, uh, I'll go your way with this. What can you share about the green screen experience and maybe even specific advice you could give to someone out there who is like, I can't shoot something on green screen. It's too difficult. I mean, it's pretty, pretty bananas just because like, A, it's like it taught me a little bit about trust, even though we worked together for on tons of stuff. But like this was a different thing. And also we shot it in the middle of the pre-vaccine pandemic. And so like trusting that the makeup artist putting my prosthetic on also was taking, you know, all of that stuff. The whole thing just felt trust. Like if I trust and then look what paid off. I'm here talking to you with two buttons. Well, and, and yeah, like, I mean, it really was just more so than anything I've done. Just like you said, it was about friendship. And I think I even told Nate I need you there for the entire shoot. He didn't stay for the entire, he got paid for the entire shoot. He didn't stay for the entire shoot. But regardless, it was really sweet when I said, uh, I need you there because you are my family. <laughs> and that really was kind of the the vibe, I think. I mean, yeah. everybody says that, but it really was, I mean, it was a scary time to be alive, let alone making anything. And yeah, it was, yeah. I feel like making something powers anyone through that scary time to be alive. If I couldn't make things during that period of lockdown, I don't I don't know how healthy I would be now. No, and, and honestly, this movie wouldn't exist without that, like, the early lockdown. Because I was no longer getting hired for anything. Because, believe it or not, uh, when COVID hit... People didn't really, uh, people weren't like, oh, we need alternative comedy right now. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was like not an essential service randomly. Yeah. <laughs> I am going to try to get my student loans forgive, forgiven for it. But um, yeah, no, I mean, it, so it really was just like, we had the time to finally really devote to something like this. One specific person I wanted to ask how they got involved, Bob Odenkirk. <laughs> He's on the brain right now. It's Emmy Day. Oh, yeah, no. I mean, so that's still so surreal because... I, I mean, so we, Bob the Goon was always in the script and it was always like a question of like who could play this part. Cause it also wasn't really like a well-developed role. It was just, I want this weird Bob the Goon character in it. It was like, what famous Bobs do I kind of know? And one was Odin Kirk. Cause I worked with him on birthday boys. 
but I was very nervous to ask him because a I was a I was pretending to be a different gender at the time <laughs> and B he always used to get my name wrong. He's the nicest man I've ever worked with. You you could have you could have worked on Mr. Show. Um, <laughs> but like so I I actually called Heidecker and was like can you cash in a f- one of your I'm sure you have a, a limited amount of favors with him left but <laughs> and um he hooked it up and I had a call with Bob and it was like literally like a half hour phone call where we talked about the part and it was really cool. And he was very, um, you know, he listened to to me ramble about, you know, all my highfalutin ideas about this illegal movie. And, um, and you know, his only request was, you know, like, you know, I'll, I'll do it. I want to do it. I think it's great. I think you're great. But like, just make me look kind of fucked up. Like, 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 give me like a big scar or like something. Cause I don't want people to think like, oh, it's cool. Bob's in it, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, that's definitely what we were doing. <laughs> I mean, it was definitely like, look, Bob Odenkirk is in the movie, but we gave him a giant scar. You can still tell it's Bob Odenkirk. <laughs> <laughs> I love that he got involved. I have to let you guys go soon. So to wrap it up here, I am curious because of what you're doing here. Is there any like, like traditional big budget studio superhero movie out there that's breaking the mold in a way that you find creatively exciting and wish more movies on that scale would do to, you know, change the industry and change the genre for the better going forward. I liked The Suicide Squad. Uh, yeah. You know, that was fun. Morbius, of course. Internet. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, that's the key word. That's yeah. partially. I mean, like, I don't want to put because like I, I do think Todd Phillips Joker I loved it. Like it really did inspire me. It spoke to me in a way that was like, it's really cool that there's a movie, a comic book movie, let alone one that makes a billion dollars about like mental illness and poverty and like where that all intersects. But like, I think part of the the thing with this movie is like, I want to see big budget IPs get the kind of treatment that you're talking about where, you know, cause it is such, it is such a wonderful genre that you can play in and i feel like we really along the way realized like you can do anything in this world so like why can't you unpack like real human emotion and themes and stuff so i mean hopefully we have an answer the next time we're asked that question because i i don't really have one right now i don't think i i can understand i mean you're you're maybe creating an answer with your own movie and hopefully inspiring others out there that way no, I'm 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 full like please like I'm I can't wait to see a, a major studio try to rip this off in some way. It's gonna be really <laughs> funny to watch. I am <laughs> counting down the seconds yeah. until I can see that happen. Oh wow! Oh, you Claymation. know what I will say is that if there are people in positions of power in studios who are willing to just say yes to stuff, then I think something like this is possible on a much larger scale. Yeah, because we had nobody telling us no, and I think that's why it wound up the way that it did. And I also think. I mean, look, I, I'm so tired of hearing people say like the world's ending and cinema's ending and all that stuff. Like, I do feel like it's like we're kind of almost like at a starting over point. So, like, I don't know. I have hope for that. I really do have hope for that. Sorry, you were trying to get rid of us. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm definitely not trying to. I'm terrible at keeping everybody on schedule because I could talk about these movies, including yours, all day long. Oh, Congratulations. You. This is a serious feat that only gets accomplished if people are so driven by what they want to achieve. So it is an absolute marvel, huh? I didn't mean to do that, but <laughs> it truly is like a marvel that all of you came together and pulled this movie off during such a challenging time. So I cannot congratulate you enough to everybody out there. Keep an eye out for The People's Joker and more interviews from The Supper Suite at TIFF 2022.